In the 1980s, Larry Bird and Kevin McHale were two of the most dominant players in the NBA, leading the Boston Celtics to three championships and establishing themselves as indelible legends of the game. But what many fans may not know is the complexity of their relationship both on and off the court. The legends were tight, but it still didn't stop Larry Legend from pranking his fellow Celtics star. I was uh, getting ready to start a game and get up to the jump ball and, and, and Larry said, you know, just, just out of the blue, he goes, go ahead, Kevin, tell Elvin Hayes what you told me. And I didn't tell him anything. And I said, well, go ahead and tell him, like, you said you were gonna kick his ass. And I'm like, oh man, and Elvin Hayes is looking at me. Well, at that point, it was hard to say, no, I didn't say anything. I said, oh, I guess so. But you know, Larry just got stuff started up. Larry is a funny guy. Charles Barkley is one of the most recognizable figures in the NBA. Not only was he a heck of a player, but he has also transitioned into one of the best analysts on TV, a position that is enhanced by his wealth of knowledge and his overall experience. That being said, there was a time when even Sir Charles was just a young man looking to make a name for himself. And back when he first got started, Chuck was easily starstruck. Unfortunately, it was his youthful naivety that led him to be pranked. We had my first All-Star game, and Kareem sitting at the back. <laughs> And Bird and McHale, I said, man, I, I want to go meet Kareem. I never met him. They said, go back there and say hello to him. <laughs> I walked back, and he's back there reading. And I said, hey, Mr. Jabbar. He looks up. I'm reading. Uh. <laughs> I said, OK. I turn around. McHale and Bird are laughing their ass off. They knew it was the <laughs> setup. Like, I know OK, it OK, setup. OK. <laughs> Y'all got me good. Yeah. In Spike Lee's 1986 film, She's Gotta Have It, Mars Blackman, a character played by Lee himself, refers to Larry Bird as the ugliest SOB in the NBA. This line caused some controversy at the time, with some people accusing Lee of racism. Lee later defended the line, saying that it was simply a reflection of Mars's character, who is known for his blunt and often offensive remarks. Lee also said that he respected Bird's playing ability, even if he didn't find him attractive. In 2022, Lee spoke on meeting Bird for the first time and the anxiety he had before meeting the legend. I tell a story about Larry Bird. My first film, my character, Mars Blackman, is having a discussion about basketball. The white boy's bad, you gotta give him credit. And my character said not a nice thing about Larry Bird. He's the ugliest motherfucker in me, that's what he is. For the first time, Capital One commercials. It's a parrot. He's got a name, Larry. Bird. Hey, hey guys. Larry Legend. Hey, who's that? My bracket buddy, Charles Barkley. The first Larry Bird, I'm like, oh man, life. So I was really nervous. I made a point that when Larry comes to the set, I'm gonna go to his trailer. So I knocked on the trailer. It was just him alone. I said, Mr. Burke, I come in. I was nervous. And I said, Larry, I apologize anything, you know, that you might have taken offense to. He said, Spike, man, forget about that, man. And then we dapped up. I, I really want to say that because I was nervous. Terrell Brandon played for three teams during his 11-year career in the NBA. He's a two-time All-Star and was a key starter on three NBA franchises before a series of injuries ultimately forced him to play his last game at 31 years old. Brandon was selected 11th overall in the 1991 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers. After a strong rookie season, Brandon was named to the NBA All-Rookie Team. He spent his first three and a half seasons as the backup to All-Star point guard and Cavs legend Mark Price. In 2021, he recalled how badass Larry Bird was on the court, even at the end of his legendary career. Bird is a psychologically assassin. In what way, though? We was up one. He said, who's guarding me? As we come out of timeout, I says, Craig Elo. He says, why you got that white boy on me? <laughs> Don't put no white boy on me. He said, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna get in the corner. Then Johnson gonna pass it to me and I'm gonna hit the last second shot and it's over. I told Joe Wood, I said, hey man, listen, the ball is going to light it, but everybody knows what's going to light it. Right. Do whatever you can. Craig, Gerald, just cover him. He hit the shot, all of them were jumping on, right? He was getting them off of him like this. He walked off and said, Legend. <laughs> Larry Bird, man. <laughs> Larry Bird was a highly anticipated rookie when he joined the Boston Celtics in 1979. He had been a star at Indiana State, and he was expected to be a major contributor right away. However, Bird's arrival was not without its challenges. He was a white player in a league that was predominantly black, 
and he was often stereotyped as being soft or not tough enough. One of the people who was skeptical of Bird was Cedric Maxwell, a veteran forward who was already a key member of the Celtics. Maxwell had a reputation for being a tough player, and he was not afraid to speak his mind. In one of their first practices together, Maxwell quickly learned this Bird guy is something special. Got when I walk in the first day of camp, them guys were on the floor stretching, and here comes the white savior, here comes this, here comes that. I think that you would say that most black players at the time were racist, in, in the sense that we did not think that you could find a, a white guy who could play better than any black guy. I sort of enjoyed it because I knew I was going to battle him all day. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow, he can't get off a shot. He's not that strong. This is going to be a layup. But Curtis and Sidney didn't last long. They didn't make it through the first practice. And they were cut. Bam, knocks down the jump shot. Maybe that was luck. Gets the ball again. Bam, knocks down another jump shot. Now I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm gonna D this guy up. I'm gonna show him his life. 20 feet away, bam, 25 feet away, bam. <laughs> I, my mind just goes to the, damn, this white guy can play. James Worthy was a key member of the Showtime Lakers, one of the most dominant teams in NBA history. He was a versatile player who could score, rebound, and defend at a high level. He was also a clutch performer in the playoffs, and he helped the Lakers win three NBA championships. Worthy's battles with Larry Bird were some of the most exciting games of the 1980s. They were two of the best players in the league, and they always brought their best when they faced each other. But after all these years, Worthy apparently still hates Larry Legend. Larry could just flat out score and give you numbers I know I and be talking shit. There were times I had to guard him. You know the play is coming, but he would tell you it's coming. And he says, if you trail, I'm gonna trail into the lane and to a little floater. And he said, if you fucking pop, he said, if you try to get over the top, he said, I'm gonna pop to that corner and bust a jumper in your fucking face. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you, man, I'm, I'm all up on it. <laughs> you know, I got his shirt tail, I'm holding it. You know, I'm like, you. You, know you know where I'm from, I'm from Gastonia, man, he ain't talking, he ain't gonna. Sure enough, man, the ball comes in, <laughs> DJ takes a couple of dribbles. I'm quick, I'm quick enough, I think I can get over the top. I, I, I get over the top. I get out there, but he pops to the corner and I'm running. He kind of waiting, you know. Waiting, uh, and, and <laughs> he was an asshole. Craig Elo was a professional basketball player who played in the NBA for 14 seasons. Elo is perhaps best remembered for his role in one of the most famous plays in NBA history as Michael Jordan hit a game-winning jumper over him in what is known as the shot. Elo played for the Cavaliers for seven seasons, and he too suffered quite a bit from the trash talk and the brilliance of Larry Bird. There was one game in, in Cleveland where he was having a pretty rough first half, and in the old days in Cleveland, you walked off the court at, uh, the same way at halftime, and I kind of puffed up on him and walked beside him and was like, yeah, you're one for 10. I was like, that's defense, you know? And he just kind of looked at me and said, there's two halves. <laughs> and he came back out and hit about 10 in a row on me. And the last one was left-handed. And he asked me if my mother was watching because <laughs> uh, he wanted to embarrass me. So <laughs> yeah, so he was. While Larry Bird always tried to keep a low profile, he was just too much to overcome. Playing in Boston on some excellent Celtics teams, he was always in the spotlight. His three MVP awards and three championships, along with his trash-talking ability, didn't help keep him out of people's mind, especially when he was playing against their favorite team. In his Hall of Fame speech, the legend shared a funny but true story on the time he got death threats from the opposite team's fans, mid-game. Game five of the championship series, we was out there. We were down by two or three points at halftime, and KC come walking out, and he called me over, he said, Larry, he said, I hate to tell you this. He said, there's been a death threat on your life. So you got to make a decision whether you want to finish the game or go back and sit in the locker room and wait till we get done or leave the arena. I said, well, I'm going to play. So Casey just turns and walks away. I go right through the layup line on the other side, and I look over, and here's come Casey pointing at me. I walk over to Casey. I said, now what? He goes, well, the horn's getting ready below here, Larry. He said, whatever you do, don't come to the huddle. He said, could you please stand out here? He said, could, could you please stand out here at center court? He said, you never know, the guy might be a bad shot. <laughs> so just when the horn blows, I walk over to KC. 
He's drawing up a play. I put my arm around him. He looks up, puts his head down, squats down a little bit so the guys are surrounding him. He goes, thanks a lot. Bird was part of the Pacers' front office from 1997 until 2022 when he stepped down from an active role. During his time there, Pacers players must have been in awe when he was around. In 2022, Lance Stevenson, who played for the Pacers for seven seasons, has added another story to the great Larry Bird legend. By Lance, during an Indiana Pacers practice, 60-year-old Larry Bird decided to show off his shooting stroke right in front of his young players. So we, uh, we, we... <laughs> Apart from being an elite scorer, Larry Legend was also known for his superb trash-talking skills. Bird was so gifted that he would often tell his defenders exactly how he planned on scoring and would end up pulling that exact same move. The brutal confidence he had when playing in the NBA at the highest level was absolutely staggering, and these stories epitomizes that perfectly. Larry Bird would put fear in me and everyone else. The dude couldn't jump, wasn't fast, wasn't athletic. The dude just knew how to play. So Larry got in the game one time and for some reason Chuck Daly puts me in. And Larry looks around and goes, uh, what's up Sal? I said, nah. He goes, you on me? I said, yeah, I got size on you right now. I've been watching every movie. He goes, y'all not double teaming? And he's looking around, <laughs> he goes, yo. I go, nah, it's just me, fella. He goes, mouse in the house. The dude would just tell you where he's going, shoot it in your face, talk shit to you, and run back down the floor. Right, he catches the ball and Murray. looks over at our bench and goes, I'm going to take two dribbles right, cross over left. And he catches the ball, he does this, and he shoots it. He says, Sal, you better ask for a double team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his two dribbles, cross over, pull up jump shot, wow. and looks over at our bench, and we're all looking at each other like, is he for real? He was the biggest trash talker back in the day, but he would back it up. The fact that he's able to back it up made it that much special. Around the NBA, everyone has their first moment in the league they still remember. Whether it's a trash talk exchange or getting owned by a more experienced player, those memories stay with you forever. But things might get even worse when that vet player who's welcoming you is the trash talking goat himself, Larry Bird. With the number of players he trash talked and took to school, if the NBA ever introduces a trash talking award, it should be named after Larry Bird. The guy was just fearless when it comes to mind games as rookie Eddie Johnson found out the hard way. Larry Bird basically taught me how to trash talk. It was my second game of my career and I'm scared to death already. And he walks out and he just stands next to me and he leans over and he looks at me. And I didn't really pay him any attention. He said, do you honestly think you're gonna guard me? Like, <laughs> then he stands up and he looks over at our bench and he looks at Kyle. You all think this rookie gonna guard me? Man, I'm gonna bust you up. Just right in my ear. And finally, he walks around, stands in front of me. He said, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm gonna wear your ass out. Game starts, and he's just wearing me out. And he came down, he said, I bet you can't do this. And he raises up from Steph Curry range. And he shoots an air ball. And I look at him, he like, that don't matter. It's the fact that I can do it to stay in the game. I bet you can't. <laughs> in 1992, the best players from various colleges were called in to face the Dream Team for their first scrimmage. Future All-Stars, Chris Webber, Penny Hardaway, Allen Houston, Grant Hill, and Jamal Mashburn were part of the team dubbed the College All-Stars. According to Mashburn, he, along with his fellow select teammates, given first-hand experience of Larry Bird's trash-talking the very first time they met Larry Legend. Larry Bird, you don't realize how big Larry Bird is until you stand yeah, up close to yeah, Larry. Yeah. He walked by us and he says, y'all those college guys? And he looked at us and he said, get some fucking rest, it's gonna be a long week, and walked off. And we get back to the hotel and Ronnie Rogers said, hey Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. 
We ain't think nothing of it. The next day we came in and I never seen this. And this one I was like, this is a different breed. Larry Bird got the ball on Rodney Rogers. And every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. One dribble, pull up, going left, off glass. <laughs> one dribble going right, spin, shot, bucket. He scored nine times or eight times in a row and said, young fella, look like 84, huh? <laughs> and, Last time he made it. <laughs> yeah, right. The playoffs are where superstars shine. Adrenaline and pure talent will take over. If you believe you can't be stopped, usually you can't. However, sometimes when your game goes to a new level, this challenge inspires your competitor to wrestle the spotlight away from you. This happened in Game 7 of the 1988 Eastern Conference semifinals, and the stars were Larry Bird and Dominique Wilkins. The human highlight reel and Larry Legend couldn't be any more polar opposite in their playing styles. Bird was pure finesse and poetry in motion. Wilkins was more shock and awe. Boston won the first two contests, then the upstart Hawks took the next three. However, Boston was not going to throw in the towel as they were able to salvage their season with a Game 6 win in Atlanta. Game 7 ended up being a gunfight, a duel, and battle of two wills. Here's the crucial moments of Game 7, told by Wilkins. We knew going to Game 6, I said, man, we could, we could advance and we can beat these guys. And we blew our opportunity. After the game, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win in Boston. Our shots are going to be dropping a little bit better, and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. We get to Boston. Yeah, so whoever guarded me tonight going to have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in other locker rooms to, to his teammates. He only had 12 points going to fourth quarter. Kevin Willis was me and Larry. We were running down the court, and Kevin reached off me, put his hands, and Bird said, said, don't let this so-and-so score in one night. I'm like, what you doing? You don't wake up a sleeping giant. <laughs> and his eyes got that big. And he got hot. It's Bird's turn. Bird snaps free. Comes up with a shot. And the Celtics lead it. It's Bird. It was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. That's it. Boston, 118. Atlanta, 116. In the 1980s, Wilkins and Bird, two of the greatest players in NBA history, engaged in an exciting rivalry. The two players, who played in different ways, were equally dominant on the court and contributed to numerous memorable plays and deep playoff runs by their respective teams. But despite their strong battles on the court and early difficulties, Wilkins and Bird respected one another as rivals. This wasn't the case early in Wilkins' NBA career. Rookie Wilkins had to earn the respect of Larry Legend. By Wilkins, Bird didn't even want to shake hands with him, and that's what will remind him of their first meeting. I mean, we're in the Boston Garden. I'm in awe because this is the steak of the Boston Garden. And I remember the first, I mean, we was at the jump circle, and I go shake Larry Bird's hand. He put both hands behind his back, you know, like, I'm like, you know what, maybe he's just getting into the game, you know. Right? <laughs> I'm trying to give the benefit down to the first play of the game, I'm gone. He said, I don't know why they got you guarding me, Holmes. And he shoots <laughs> a three. And I wasn't mad he made the three. I thought, this some bitch just called me Holmes. <laughs> oh man, I was so mad. So I'm coming down the left side and I go up in a fast break and he comes out and I gun, I'm pumping it behind my head and he jumped. And they find Wilkins, look out. I said, I got him. Boom! <laughs> he's sitting down on the ground, I'm pointing like this. He said, Hey Rook, I'm like, what? He said, I like you, you got balls, but I'm still getting 40 on your ass. <laughs> Larry Bird and Magic Johnson started the golden era of the NBA during the 1980s. It continued in the 1990s as a myriad of basketball legends graced the hardwood, each leaving an indelible mark on the sport. Bird was the catalyst for countless tales shared by NBA legends of that era. From Magic Johnson's fierce rivalry to Michael Jordan's admiration, Every basketball great from that time seems to have a Larry Bird story, a testament to his unique skill, determination, and enduring impact on the game they all loved. Here's another 90s legend telling a Larry Bird story, the great Utah Jazz power forward Carl Malone. I remember sitting on the bench watching Kevin McHale and Larry Bird, and Larry Bird did something. To me, I'm still marveled at this, and he got so many people. It was a timeout, and one of our teammates Bart Kofold had a camera. Right. He's taking pictures. So Larry Bird came over there and looked at our bench, and he said, uh, three-pointer from right over here. 
<laughs> so I'm sitting over there looking like that <laughs> babe Ruth. <laughs> man, calling man. your shot already, Point. right? Yeah. So I say, I'm sitting there looking. He looked down at the floor. Hell, everybody looked down at the floor. He like, like he threw something. And he hit a three. Oh, can you believe that? And I remember Kevin kind of looking over at the bench like this is going to be a long night. There's no question Bill Walton played a significant role in helping the 1985-86 Boston Celtics win a championship. In his first year with the team, Walton came off the bench to spell both Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. The oft-injured Walton, who missed three full NBA seasons because of injury, played 80 games that season and was named the NBA's sixth man of the year. In 2020, Walton shared a great story on how Bird took over a game that was seemed to be over already in the start of the third quarter. Nobody wants to ever take the ball out of bounds because they know they're never going to get it back. Larry Bird always took the ball out of bounds. He's going to take the ball out of bounds, and that referee comes, and the referee hands the ball to Larry to start the third. We're down 25. Larry takes the ball and pushes it back into the midsection of the referee so that he can't get away, and the referee is like startled, staggered. What's going on here? We're all right there, right in front of the Celtic bench. And Larry looks right into the soul, right through the eyes of that referee, and he says to him, we're not going to quit. You make sure you don't quit either. The guy just like melted on the spot. Larry hit 11 straight shots to start the third, including seven threes. We were tied at the end of the third. We won in overtime. We did not need a plane to get home that night. Larry Bird, you're awesome. In 1986, the great Larry Bird won the NBA's first three-point contest. Everybody knows about his famous flex. When walked into the locker room and asked his peers, who's coming in second? But after claiming victory and reuniting with his teammates, the sharpshooter was on a mission. If you bet against him, you were going to pay the price, literally. As the story goes, some members of the Boston squad apparently doubted his chances. Not only did that skepticism push the forward to enter the contest, but it gave him the perfect opportunity to flex his metaphorical muscles after his win. So when the Celtics checked in an hotel to resume the regular season, Bird patrolled the lobby with a mini golf pencil and small notepad, collecting cash from teammates who made the mistake of betting against him in the three-point contest, and no one was allowed to postpone payment. In his exact words, if you don't have your money, I'll wait right here while you go back to your room and get it, Bird told teammates. I'm the three-point king. In the 1986 NBA Finals, it was the first time Hakeem, the Dream, had played on the biggest basketball stage. Before Game 1, he was asked about facing the storied Boston Celtics franchise. The 23-year-old from Lagos, Nigeria, said he knew nothing about the Celtics' history. I know nothing of this tradition. I am not from around here, he said. When Larry Bird heard what Hakeem said, Larry Legend offered to educate him about the 15 banners that hung from the Boston Garden rafters. We'd like to give him a two-week history lesson, Bird said savagely replied. The legend went on to record two triple doubles in the series, including a takeover performance in Game 6. Larry got every rebound. Larry made every steal. He made every pass. He just literally did everything. The Celtics closed out the Rockets in that sixth game, and Bird won Finals MVP after averaging 24 points, 9.7 rebounds, and 9.5 assists for the series. Larry Bird, the greatest player I've ever played by far. When it comes to modern NBA trash talkers, Gary Payton sits near the top of the list. The glove was a relentless defender, and verbal warfare was part of his arsenal. In retirement, though, he's able to see things from a more removed perspective and dish out a few compliments. When Payton was asked about Larry Legend's trash talk, not only did he confirm that Bird could talk a big game, but the former guard also admitted that he could back it up. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to. Any way he wanted to. Larry Bird was cold. Playing at the guard, man, on his last leg. Bird used to tell me, look here, man. I'm going to shoot this motherfucker jump in your face right there in that cone. I can shoot a jump in anywhere I want to. He said, I'm going to make sure I tell you where I'm going to shoot the ball at. Wrap it up and bust your head open. All that shit. Man. And I said, shit, watch this. And I'm getting him up. And he slow balled me. And he said, young fella, what did I tell you I was going to do? And he turned around, raised up, looked around, it was all draw. <laughs> He's the coldest dude I ever seen with that shit, man. And I said, shit, I ain't going to mess with you no more. <laughs> and everybody be talking about these great greats. They don't be always mentioning him. He was the shit. If you played professional basketball between 1979 and 1992, being asked to defend Larry Bird was the sporting equivalent of drawing the short straw. 
Even if you knew what the Boston Celtics star was going to do, stopping him was another story. Dominique Wilkins experienced that reality firsthand. Not only did he have to try and slow down the prolific scorer, but he was on the receiving end of some trash talk along the way. And while both men have long since retired, that verbal warfare is still going on. On January 26, 2023, Pacers president of basketball operations Kevin Pritchard took to Twitter to share some texts that he had received from Bird. The former forward, who spent time in Indianapolis as both a coach and an executive, had snapped a picture of a photo of him shooting a jumper over Wilkins. It wasn't enough to just send a picture, though. Larry Legend had to talk a bit of trash, writing, Can you please tell your boy to put a hand up? I think that is the pose for the statue. Once that screenshot hit social media, it made its way to Wilkins. The former Atlanta Hawk simply responded, Man the disrespect, with four crying laughing emojis. Based on his reaction, it's fair to say that Dominique Wilkins hasn't taken Bird's jab personally. At this point, he probably knows what it's like dealing with Larry Legend. When Reggie Miller was a rookie, he did his best to psych out the great Larry Bird and failed miserably. Luckily, this didn't stop Miller from having a storied NBA career. He was even fortunate enough to play for Bird from 1997 to 2000. When Miller entered the league in 1987, Bird and the Boston Celtics were already legendary. They had won three NBA championships in the 1980s, and Bird was the MVP three years running. Miller didn't seem to care about any of that. In a snippet from his book, I Love Being the Enemy, Reggie recounts his story of razzing the legend. A close game between the Celtics and Pacers was coming down to free throws. With only 20 seconds left, Bird was fouled and sent to the free throw line. To distract him from making the shot, Miller tried trash talking. Bird, irritated by the Miller whispers, turned his head to look at Miller. You got to be kidding me, Rook. You got to be kidding me, he said. Bird hit the first free throw and continued on his rant. Rook, I'm the best shooter in the league right now. In the league, understand? And you're up here trying to say something? After he easily hit the next shot, Miller said he felt like an idiot trying to get under the skin of the great Larry Bird, especially in front of Bird's teammates who found the whole scene hilarious. Even after his retirement, Bird was a terrific shooter, and many years after hanging the boots, the legendary small forward still knocked shots, surprising former and current players. During his time as the president of basketball operations for the Indiana Pacers, Bird once shocked Paul George and the rest of the team when he made 15 straight shots while wearing a suit. During a Q&A session with Slam, George recalled how impressive Bird was. By George, Bird picked a ball up that had rolled over. He rolled up his sleeves and made about 15 in a row and just walked out like nothing just happened. PG also told it was the craziest thing he's ever seen and that him and his Pacers teammates were speechless and they didn't know whether to keep shooting or just to end practice. In 2023, George again talked on the Celtics legend. This time, he told a different story while doing a Podcast P episode. We had a tight relationship. He's in Larry. front office, though, when you were there, right? Yeah, he was yeah, in front so office. Crazy Larry story. It was after practice, right? And we were shooting around, and he's walking out. To this point, I've never seen him play. Like, I've never seen him shoot. I always had this vision of him from, you know, YouTube videos right. and old clips like that. We're shooting, and he's, like, walking out of the gym about to leave, but the ball rolls over to him. So he picks the ball up, bro, shoots that motherfucker, cash from three and he's in slacks button down right. he got his loafers on he could have that up and airballed and then i would have just had this whole d different like mindset about who he was right. like his f was not like that yeah did he say anything to you after he made oh, it bro like, cashed that so. motherfucker, bro and just walked out like didn't say shit, just walked out of the gym i am who i am i am who i am i'm the bird <laughs> mother for a guy who's always at a disadvantage due to his lack of athleticism larry bird was one confident dude he would often seek out the toughest defenders, who are almost always the most athletically gifted players in the NBA. As Charles Barkley told numerous times, Bird used to call out coaches and players for assigning a white player to guard him mid-game. But Bird didn't talk trash to you, did Oh my he? God, Bird talked trash to everybody. <laughs> I remember him, he was cursing under his breath. And I asked him, I said, Larry, what's going on with you? He says, you guys are being disrespectful to me. And I says, what are you talking about? He says, you guys are putting a white guy on me. 
That's disrespectful. Wait, who's the white guy I, you put I, on I, it? I can't remember who it was. I just started laughing. I had no comeback. He says, he says, it's disrespectful when y'all put a white guy on me. And I'm sitting there like, I'm laughing in the middle of a game. And there's only two guys <laughs> said that to me. Him and Michael. Larry and Michael are the only two guys. You, you, and you gotta laugh. You don't put a white guy on me. That's just fucking disrespectful. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Tell us in the comments, what is your favorite Larry Bird's trash talk? And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. For even more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels, Free Dawkins and Vintage Dawkins, and follow us on social media.